So we'll fast forward now okay. about mm, 40 years, I guess. And at this point, um, mom is losing her vision due to macular degeneration. Hmm. Uh, her back is hunched with osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. She has a scar that starts at her throat and goes down to her breastbone as a result of the open heart surgery um, that she's had to replace the mitral valve. Mm -hmm. She has le restless leg syndrome, just she oh. doesn't sleep at night. It was mm -hmm. just miserable. And um, the thing that is frustrating her more than anything is the severe hearing loss that's been brought on as a result of the medication that mm -hmm. she's taking for her heart. Mm -hmm. She's 70 years old. And dad is 75, and he looks to be as healthy and robust as any 75-year-old man on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. And then he has a stroke mm -hmm. um, on October 30th, 1993. And <clears throat> it, it, it affects his ability to think mm -hmm. and to process information, to speak. Um, he lost the use of his right hand, and he had a lot of difficulty walking. And she became his caregiver at that point. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways that she managed her emotional stress was by writing letters to me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I edited the letters into the book, Letters from Madeline, Chronicles mm -hmm. of a Caregiver. Where I know that she wrote letters to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you've read the book. Mm -hmm. Do you, were the letters that she sent to me the same as the yeah. letters that she sent to mm -hmm. you. So a lot of times she just wrote mm -hmm. the, le the same letter and she wrote Dear Jean yeah. instead of Dear Elaine. And then she always put something extra in your letter. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, because they were, they were really long letters. I know. And, and you would feel like you had just really had, you'd spent the afternoon with her after mm -hmm. you read a letter. Um, so what struck you uh, in her letters? that she was pretty worn out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very obvious mm -hmm. that she was worn out. Mm -hmm. And how she had the energy, that was probably her only recreation was writing a letter. I think so. I think writing the letters and reading, mm -hmm. um, because she was a devotee oh, of yes. self-help books and trashy romance novels. Oh, she liked romance. <laughs> she oh. did. I didn't. I did not know that. I thought everything she read was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Puritan. <laughs> <laughs> and and she did just for pure escapism once in a while read a romance novel, which makes me, uh, which brings me to the next topic. Uh, were you surprised by the Avis affair? Shocked. <laughs> is a light word for it. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, <And> that, <laughs> so Dad, after he had prostate cancer as well, so he had been wearing adult diapers for quite some time. And, and as I remember the story, he turned to Mom at breakfast one morning and he said, um, Madeline, it occurs to me that you don't want to have sex with me anymore. And she said, that's right, Quentin, that part of our life is over, right? Mm. And, and then the next morning, he said, um, would you call Avis for me? And Avis was a girl that he had taken to his high school senior prom, and he wanted mom to arrange a sex date mm. for him with Avis. Um, and now the, the situation, the, the story went on for months. So let me ask you this. What would you have done if Frank, Uncle Frank had made a similar request of you? I'm going to have to say I'm going to have to take the Fifth Amendment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you think you would have heard him? <laughs> <laughs> he had been sore. 